Well, first, we're going to start with a high speed steel tool. And the tool is ground with a seven degree rake on the top, and there's some clearance on the front, and there's some side clearance. And you can see a trapezoidal effect here of how the tool is ground. Most tools in the industry are ground this way, where the bottom of the tool is smaller than the top. It's the top corner that actually does all the work, and you need to have clearance so it doesn't rub against your workpiece. So I've ground this one with the six, seven degree rake here pretty much to match the store-bought insert uh, the carbide tool. So I'll show you the carbide tool. Carbide tool, it's a brazed on insert on cold roll steel. And it has a seven degree rake here. And again, we have front clearance and side clearance. And you can see there's like a trapezoidal effect here too, where the bottom of the tool is smaller than the top of the tool. So the top corner is actually the only part of the tool you want to touch the workpiece. So in the experiment here, we're gonna start with the high speed steel tool. So I'll insert the tool into the tool post. And the stock here, it's about 3.6 in diameter, the, turn, the part that I'm gonna turn. And the, the stock is about 32 Rockwell for hardness. The tool itself, high-speed steel, is around 62 Rockwell. So the tool is twice as hard as, this, as the material that we're cutting. So to start with, we're gonna start with a, uh, a spindle speed of 90 RPM. And we're gonna go to a depth of cut, a radial depth of cut of 50 thousandths deep. And we're gonna run the feed rate at seven thousandths and three tenths inches per rev. So I'm gonna start the spindle. And I'll advance the tool in until I make contact and we'll, we'll set a zero. So it's just touching there. I'm gonna just move the tool away. And I'm gonna set my X to zero. Then I'll turn in my 50 thousandths radial, which is actually, this is the diameter machine, so we're gonna go 100 thousandths. And we're about 101, that's fine. And we're running it Seven thousandths and seven thousandths per rev. So I'm gonna start my feed. And you can see very slow feed rate. See the chip curling up? I just stopped my feed, pulled away. So there's my chip. And they're pretty hot. And you can't really see it sizzle, but I heard a little bit of a sizzle there. So we'll now look at the tool. The tool looks fine, no problems with the tip. So we can definitely go faster with this. So I'm gonna, I just disturbed it. I'm gonna go back to my negative 100. And our next parameter is gonna be just increasing the spindle speed. So we'll go to 140 RPM. So that's turning this lever over to there. And we'll stay on number one. Number one. So you'll see a difference in spindle speed. We'll start this up. And spindle speed is a little faster. Still at 100. And we're still at our seven thousandths and three tenths. So we'll start another turning cut. And there's a little vibration there. The chip came out a little 
more and it's a little hotter it sizzles a little bit and the tool still looks like it's in pretty good condition there's a little bit of a burn on there from probably the the cutting forces so we'll go into a faster spindle speed since this is still working we'll go to 330 rpm so back into our hundred we'll go to 330 do a test here okay and we'll see how this performs we'll start the spindle come over closer to our stock here and start our feed and you can see what happened there the tool didn't survive that cut the uh, Basically, it's too hot for the tool, and it, it overcame the, the hardness of the tool by the heat, basically annealed the tool and wore it out. So that limited how much, how fast you can cut with high-speed steel. So now what we're going to do is go to carbide. So carbide being a much tougher material and it can withstand greater heat will basically pick up where we left off with the high-speed steel but because we know carbide is definitely a harder material we can actually increase the feed rate so we're going to double the feed rate we're going to go to fourteen thousandths and seven tenths and that's basically just changing my lever here that basically doubles my feed rate and we're going to stay with all our same values so 330 where the high speed steel failed and 50 thousandths depth of cut so because I've changed tools I don't know where the tip of this tool is relative to the diameter so I'm going to come over and make contact again and reset my X so I'll start up and we'll come in and make contact and I'll reset my X to zero then we'll turn in a hundred thousandths where we were before with the high-speed steel and we'll come over to where we left off there with now a faster feed rate and we'll start engage the feed and you can see the chip is a lot more stringy elongated the condition of the of the diameter that we turned is actually a lot smoother and it's a pretty tough chip here they're pretty hot so that's why I'm using pliers can't really dip this one it's I could hear it sizzle it's still hot it's blue but the tool survived fine definitely uh, superior to the high-speed steel so we'll see what limits the material removal rate with this tool so the next parameter will increase the spindle speed again to 385 so I'll start this I'll change the spindle here to 385 and that's over here and we're on number two I'll test it okay so a little faster spindle speed I'll go back into my negative 100 50 thousandths radial of depth of cut and we'll see what happens here
So you can see there, you can hear the machine laboring. The tool is still in pretty good shape. The chip is a lot more curled. But you can just, you can tell that uh, you can pretty much surmise what's going to limit the material removal rate with this tool. So I'm going to go to 585 on our spindle. I've already set it here to 585. And we're going to make another cut and see what will limit the material removal rate. So we'll start the spindle. And I'll go back into the 100 thousandths so 50 thousandths radial depth of cut. And we'll engage the feed. And definitely it's a power requirement here. And if I back this off. You can see, you can see what happened here. The chip is still hanging on to the material. And what limited our material removal rate in this case is the machine doesn't have enough power to drive the tool that fast with a uh, spindle speed.